literacy. Paper one. All right. In paper one, we have a few topics, and there are three of them. Where we have finance, data handling, and probability. Actually, probability uh, crosses throughout. Those are the topics we shall expect in paper one. But what we mean expect. All right. Here we go. First and foremost, paper one, uh, it's out of 150. Of 150, 60% is going to come from question. This is what? Uh, this will be finance. And 35%, this is data, data handling. And 5%, this will be what? Prob probability. Whoever comes to the question paper or whoever goes to the exam paper, Please take note that you will find finance, finance, you'll find data handling. When you talk of data handling, you know, uh, mean, mode, range. Uh, we look at the graphs, how to interpret them. You know, these are the questions which are expert, but 60% is coming from finance. Finance, whereby we look at taxation, break-even point, uh, production cost. Everything to do with that. It's under finance, VAT, UIF, pension, you know. As I said, we have paper one topics, which is finance, which will contribute 60%, plus or minus five. All right. Plus or minus five, which it simply means might be 65 or 60, or it might be 55%. Percent. But the largest number, the largest mark has to come from finance. Probability followed. Sorry, uh, data handling, 35%, and probability, which is 5%. Here, yeah, we might also include the growth chart and everything. All right. When we look at the uh, question paper structure, question paper structure, the questions, how they are going to be. Question one, please don't leave it behind. Answer it. How? Answer it with all your energy. Make sure that you've answered it. Because question one has to be passed. Now, question one in mathematical literacy, we expect and we predict that uh, it will have finance and data handling. These questions will be made mixed up. All right. Question two, it's finance. Then question three, data handling. Then question four and five, now it goes back to integrated, which simply means uh, uh, it will be mixed finance and data handling. Now, another thing is that when we say integrated in context, now this one will be a little bit advanced, a little bit, but not as easy as question one, but it's still to be under the same concept of question one, which says uh, both finance and data handling in question one. Take note of that. Question one, we have both. This is what we expect in question one. You see that? Question two. Question two, we expect finance. Question three, we expect data handling. Question four, this takes you back to question one, integrated. Inter when you look at integrated, it means uh, you have concepts of uh, data handling and finance in the same question. All right. Concepts of finance and data handling in the same question. Uh, question two, finance, data handling. All right. Yes, the growth chart, this is the BMI. We shall see it here and there, including the, data, uh, the measures of spread in data handling. Now, when you look at measures of spread, we shall be looking at uh, measures of spread. Uh, you look at your you look at your quartiles you look at your range and you look at your in the quartile then i'm asking uh or including the chart growth application of measures and now when you look at measures because uh, from the chart growth we get what you call what we get what you call the percentiles you understand? 
So why do we look at quartiles in percentiles? Because you know Q1 is 50% or, or the 50th percentile. Uh, sorry, Q1 is the 25th percentile. Q2 is the 50th percentile. Q3, 7th, 5th percentile. We get this from the growth chart. You're right. Probability will be there, but in a small context. All right, finance. When we look at finance, this is what we expect you to come knowing. Under finance, we expect you to come knowing this, or you will be expected to know this. The financial documents and tariff system. We've seen this already. Financial documents, uh, we look at the... Um, we look at the household household uh, documents, whereby we look at the uh, the bills, the electricity bill. Um, we can also look at someone's bank statement, the financial document, bank statement. Then we shall also look at this shopping, 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 uh, shopping list, or the till slip. Then they we shall look at. Uh, they we expect you to know that which will be here. Here, here, here we have UIF, uh, VAT, then the pay as you earn, pay as you earn, and the personal tax, this one here, if you remember it, the taxation that we go into, all right? Then tariff system, you've seen them, still we have water, uh, we have the electricity one, we have the electricity one, uh, we have the call, eh? call options, or the, you know, it might be also photocopier, photocopying papers, and you look at how to, to, to compare option one to option two, or option three, which option will have more, which option will be cheaper, you understand that, and then we shall look at income and expenditure, whereby we have profit and loss, surplus and deficit, all right, income and uh, expenditure statements. Uh, this one shall draw them like that. One side you have income, and the other side you have what? Expense. It's more like a budget. You understand? More like a budget. Then cost and cost price and selling price. The CP versus SP. You understand? Whereby we say a profit will always equal to selling price minus cost price. You remember that? Or oh, profit as a percentage. Profit as a percentage will always be selling price minus cost price divided by cost price times 100. Or oh, we also use this for, we shall also use it for percentage change. Percentage change. We shall use it for percentage change. As time goes on, we shall see break even point. Break even point. Come to an exam and you know break even point. How do we tell the break even point? It's a point where income income will always equal to expenditure or expense. The same money you put in, the same money you take out, or the, the same money that goes out. You understand? Know, Income equals to expenditure. Take note, there is no loss, no loss, no profit at break-even point. At break-even point, there's no loss, there's no profit. You understand? Break-even point, there's no loss, there's no profit. Then we shall look at, also we look at a 5.5, which is the interest, interest, bank loans and investments. These ones, we've seen them already. The loans, which uh, we looked at the home loan, whereby we, we take the month, uh, monthly repayment, we always equal to the loan amount divided by the, by a thousand times the factor. Monthly repayment, we looked at that. Investment, uh, sorry, interest. We have what we call the compound interest and the simple interest. Compound interest and simple interest. All right. Inflation. Inflation, the general increase. The general, the general increase. 
in prices of goods and in prices of goods and services the general increase in prices of goods and services still you have to know this that it's a to always be the current year minus the previous year divided by the previous year times a hundred this is if you're looking for inflation inflation rate if you're looking for inflation rate this is how we shall be doing it i've already talked of taxation where we expect to see uif vet the uh, you know exchange rate exchange rate uh changing here we shall be changing uh one currency to another currency you change one currency to another another currency you change one currency to another currency Yes, this one leads us to data handling, whereby we look at classification, organizing, summarizing, and representation. Remember, there are, let me see, they have classify one, two, three, four. The fifth one is to create, to create questions. When we look at data, data handling, please just know that data, we shall say data is a, Row, row what? Row facts. And data is split into two. It's either numeric or categoric. It's numeric or categoric. And again, numeric is also split into two. It's either discrete, discrete or continuous discrete or continuous we shall look at that also all right then uh another thing that we forgot uh, we looked about uh, we look at we shall look at uh, it's called uh, the first one to show the measures of a uh, spread then we have measures measures of central measures of central tendency Measures of central tendency are three of them. We are by we have mean. I usually call them triple M, meld, and median. When is mean best representing data? When numbers are closer each other. Mod it's used when the data is categoric. When data is categoric, mod comes in. Then median we use it when we have what we call the outlier out liar that's this is when they are best in all right representing here yeah, representing data we shall expect you to know the graphs that we are using all right the graphs the pie charts uh talk of uh books and the uh, whiskers no one will ask you to draw it, but you have to know how to interpret it. This diagram that looks like that. The five point summary minimum. Then we have Q1, Q2, Q3, and we have the maxima. This you have to know how to interpret. Tell the difference between the bug graph bug graph and a histogram you understand histogram used when the work is when the data is continuous and bug graph it's good when the data is discrete uh, pie charts, we use them when the data is in a form of as a whole, like it's a whole sector of data. You see that? That's how we shall see. Summarizing data, that's when we look at the measures of central tendencies, uh, mean, mode, median, right? Organizing, organizing and classifying. Uh, the, here we look at the 
uh, frequency, the frequency table, the frequency table. This is all data handle. In frequency table, that table views that you draw with the tarries. The frequency table comes here. All right. And this could be what you expected, paper one. But please, as you come, don't forget financial documents and tariff system, income, expenditure, profit, loss, profit or loss, income, income and expenditure statements. These, you have to know how to interpret them. They might not tell you to draw it. I know we drew it in grade 10, but in grade uh, 12, we shall expect you to interpret it. All right. What does uh, this, for example, the bank statement, uh, the debit side, what does it carry? The credit side, what does it carry? You understand? The credit, it will always be coming in. Debit, this is money going out. So you always subtract on the debit size as we add on the, as we add on the credit. And this will call on to get what we call the balance. You together, the money comes in. If it comes in, let's say this is 300. Then, and previously here you had 700. The balance would become 1,000. So if we decide we have uh, 550 going out, so our balance here becomes uh, 400. Bought, you know, that's how credit comes in. Debit goes out. We shall always look at that. Otherwise, I wish you the best. Get uh, ready for paper one revision. We shall be having revision. And God bless. Bye-bye.